हेलो स्टूडेंट्स हाउ आर यू इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो ऑफ क्लास नाइन्थ वी हैव कंप्लीटेड द चैप्टर द फंडामेंटल यूनिट ऑफ लाइफ वी डिस्कस वेरियस थिंग्स लाइक व्हाट इज अ सेल हाउ वाज द सेल डिस्कवर्ड हु डिस्कवर्ड द सेल फंक्शन ऑफ वेरियस सेल ऑर्गेनिज सेल थ्योरी ओके आई होप यू हैव कंप्लीटेड द चैप्टर ऑफ ऑन योर ओन एंड ऑल्सो सॉल्व द एक्सरसाइज ऑफ दैट चैप्टर टूडे द टॉपिक दैट वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट इज टिश्यू ओके स्टूडेंट्स सो आर यू रेडी shall we start okay so the chapter that we are going to start is tissues what we will study in this let's take a look at that what we have to go through in this chapter first of all we will study the definition of the tissues then we will be studying the plant tissues and the animal tissues in the plant tissues we will be studying the meristematic tissue and their types and permanent tissues and their types in the animal tissues we will be studying epithelial tissue connective tissue muscular tissue and nervous tissue okay students so we'll be discussing all with their functions also all the important things related to the tissues getting students so now let's take a look at what is a tissue okay a group of cells that are specialized to perform a particular function forms a tissue okay students now for example in a stomach certain cells secrete hcl so they form a uh, similar kind of cells they form a group that all are secreting the hcl so this group of cell similar cells is known as a tissue that they are specialized to perform a specific function that they will only secrete the hcl okay some of the cells which secrete mucus so they have been specialized to secrete mucus only so that is what we call a tissue a group of similar cells that are specialized to perform a particular function that forms a tissue clear students so we will study one by one the plant uh, tissues and the animal tissues so in today's video we will be starting with the plant tissues okay very important one so let's start with the plant tissues okay plants do not move that is they are stationary so the most of the tissues that they have are supportive which provides them with structural strength definitely means it is saying the tissues that are present in the plants <coughs> most of the functions have supportive in nature and they provide them with structural strength they need structural strength plants because you know when a uh, uh, wind is blowing at a high speed so so that they, they do not get uprooted easily so they need strength okay so most of the tissues they have are supportive most of these tissues at present that are present in the plants are dead as they can provide better mechanical strength than the living ones and need less maintenance also why it is saying that need less maintenance because you know if the cell is living then there are various uh, <coughs> functions going on so if it, it will require oxygen water everything it will require okay because it will be doing its own functions also its own energy demands are also but if it is dead so there is less maintenance as compared to the living cell so that's why the most of these tissues that provide support to the plants are dead some plant tissues keep on dividing throughout the plant life and these tissues are localized in certain regions okay we will be studying that some plants tissues keep on dividing and some of them stop the division and they transform to perform a specific functions okay students so this is what was the general introduction to the plant tissues i hope it is clear to you so after discussing it let's take a look what we have to study in the plant tissues the plant tissue is divided into two there is a meristematic tissue and the permanent tissue the meristematic tissue is further divided in apical meristem lateral meristem and the intercalary meristem Okay, we will be discussing all of them one by one. Next, in the permanent tissue, it is divided into simple and the complex tissue. Okay, in the simple, there are parenchyma, collenchyma, sclerenchyma, and the protective tissue. And in the complex, it is the phloem and the xylem. I hope you have uh, learned or you have uh, listened the term phloem and xylem. You know, phloem is helps in the conduction of food. and xylem helps in the conduction of water and minerals okay so these are certain but we will be studying all the tissues apical lateral intercalary parenchyma collenchyma sclerenchyma protective phloem and xylem okay clear students very important flow chart it is 
you need to remember this flow chart okay one is the meristematic tissue another is the permanent tissue meristematic tissue is further divided into apical lateral and the intercalary meristem permanent tissue is divided into simple and complex simple again further divided into parenchyma colenchyma sclerenchyma and the protective one and the complex divided into the phloem and xylem we will study each of them one by one okay students so students uh, let's start with the meristematic tissue what are meristematic tissues these are responsible for growth in the plants cells in these tissue can divide and form new cells okay now these are of three types first one is the apical meristem now what are apical meristem they are <coughs> meristem the meristematic tissue present at the growing tip of the stem and the roots and it helps in increasing the length of the plant okay the apical meristem is present at the growing tip of stem and the roots and increases the length second one take a look lateral meristem also known as cambium it is present beneath the bark beneath means below the bark and it is responsible for growth in the girth of trunk trunk is stem girth means width of the stem it is responsible for the growth in the width of the stem okay students and the third one is the intercalary meristem take a look it is present at internodes or the base of the leaves and increases length between the nodes now there's a little confusion for students between apical and intercalary see the function of both them both of them is to increase the length but the difference is where they are present apical meristem is present at the growing tip of the stem okay it also increases the length and the intercalary meristem it is present at the internodes and it increases the length between the nodes getting it the uh, between the nodes the distance between the nodes is the internode so it increases the length between the nodes or it is present at the base of the leaves getting students so these are the three types of apical uh, sorry meristematic tissues that are apical lateral and the intercalary meristem what you have to learn that the their position and what is their function apical meristem present at the growing tip of the stem and increases the length lateral meristem present beneath the bark it is responsible for increase in the width and third intercalary meristem it is present at the internodes or the base of the leaves getting students now take a look uh, with the help of a diagram apical lateral and intercalary meristem what i told you about apical that they are present at the growing tip of the stem and increases the length so you can see the apical meristem is present at the tip second one we studied lateral meristem it is present beneath the bark below the bark and responsible for the increase in the thickness or you can say width okay and the third one intercalary you can see it is present between two nodes and helps in the increase length between the nodes okay very important diagram students this one okay you have to remember this diagram because it sometimes asks in the questions with the help of the well labeled diagram show the locations of meristematic tissue in the plant body okay otherwise the questions that are asked are simple what is the function of apical meristem what is the function of intercalary meristem sometime it may ask you the location basis on the based of a diagram okay students so i hope uh, the meristematic tissue is clear to all of you according to the position according to the function also okay so as we discuss in the flow chart the first one was meristematic and the second one was the permanent tissue getting students now what are permanent tissue this when the cells of meristematic tissue change their shape and size to get specialized in performing other functions in plant body this process is called differentiation okay once see the permanent tissue comes from or it is derived from the meristematic tissue only but what happens the cells of meristematic tissue are only capable of performing specialized function okay they do not divide or they you can say they stop to divide they divide to a certain extent and after they lose the property of division and they are specialized to perform a specific function this process is called differentiation and in this way the permanent tissue is formed once the cells of meristematic tissue divide to certain extent they become specialized for a particular function okay students getting it that's why the name is given permanent tissue again very important cells of meristematic tissue get specialized in performing specific function 
this process is differentiation okay these are of two types that are simple tissues and the complex tissue again it was a different uh, <clears throat> div divided into simple tissues and the complex tissue further uh, the we will study them one by one first simple tissues and then the complex tissue okay students so students uh, let's start the simple tissue now what are simple tissues the type of tissues that is composed of same type of cells okay and when we'll be studying complex tissue we'll be telling you that there are different kind of cells okay so this is the basic difference between the simple and the complex tissue the type of tissues that is composed of same type of cells okay so let's start with the first one that is the parenchyma simple tissue or it is simply said at parenchyma take a look cells of parenchyma tissues are living very important that cells are living they are oval elongated and loosely packed with intercellular spaces okay so there are intercellular spaces between the cells forming basic packing of tissue and are found throughout the plant body very important okay they are found throughout the plant body their cells are oval and elongated and mainly they are living okay the cells of parenchyma tissues are living they are loosely packed and they have intercellular spaces between them okay students you need to remember all these things now take a look at their functions what are the functions they do they provide mechanical support to the plant and second they store food and nutrients in the vacuoles okay so the questions that is asked related to parenchyma collenchyma and sclerenchyma is first of all their basic structure their function okay and about their properties also so you need to remember all these thing function provide mechanical support second is store food and nutrients in the vacuoles now there are certain special types of parenchyma let's discuss them first one is the chlorenchyma the parenchyma which contains the chlorophyll that is known as the chlorenchyma if it contains chlorophyll then it will perform photosynthesis definitely if it and it if it has chlorophyll so the parenchyma that has chlorophyll and performs photosynthesis that is known as chlorenchyma clear and the second one is the erenchyma in some aquatic plants cells of parenchyma have large air cavities to give buoyancy to plant and is called erenchyma okay as the term suggest erenchyma the su term suggest chlorenchyma means they have chlorophyll erenchyma they have air air cavities where it is present it is present in the aquatic plants why to give buoyancy so that they can float on the surface okay sometimes they cannot give, get the oxygen from the water so they need oxygen so so that their leaves or whatever can come on the surface and take the oxygen okay students so that's why they have the large air cavities to give buoyancy to the plant okay students so what we discuss in the plant uh, parenchyma was that the cells of parenchyma tissues are living they are oval and elongated loosely packed and with intercellular spaces okay they are and important they are found throughout the body and the, then the functions that provide mechanical support store food chlorenchyma and the erenchyma these are the two types of parenchyma clear students shall we move on to the next one okay the next one is the collenchyma simple tissue or simply known as collenchyma okay now let's see cells of collenchyma are living and as were the parenchyma they were also living they are oval and elongated but this time they are tightly packed with no intercellular spaces okay where they are found this time they are found below epidermis in leaves and the stems okay so we studied parenchyma and collenchyma see there are lots of similarity you can see they are also living parenchyma were also living these are also living cells collenchyma are oval and elongated they were all, they are also oval and elongated but the difference is that they had intercellular spaces and they do not have intercellular spaces actually they have an irregular thickening in the collenchyma they have irregular thickenings at the where the two cells meet at the at the end okay and they are found below epidermis this is another difference from the parenchyma they were found throughout the plant body parenchyma and collenchyma are found below epidermis in leaves and stem getting students now let's take a look at the function provides mechanical support to the plant second provide flexibility to the plants so that they can bend without breaking important function pa uh, parenchyma was also supporting but 
this provides flexibility to the plants so that they can bend without breaking clear students parent comma and colon comma the third one is the sclerenchyma comma simple tissue now let's know about it first the cells of sclerenchyma comma are dead this comes the different point because when we studying parent comma and the colon comma the cells of both were living okay the cells of parent comma were also living and the colon comma were also living this time the cells are narrow and elongated whereas in parent comma and the colon comma they were oval and elongated okay and the important thing is the cell wall in sclerenchyma comma is composed of lignin which makes it hard it okay and sometimes due to the presence of the lignin also that there is very less space inside the cell means the wall becomes cell wall becomes so thick that there is very less space inside the cell okay so they are narrow and elongated and cell wall is made up of or composed of lignin which makes it hard now where they are found they are found around vascular bundles veins of leaves in hard covering of seeds and nuts if you have seen the husk of the coconut that is also the sclerenchyma simple tissue or it is sclerenchyma tissue okay students so definitely if the cells are dead take a look at the function help to make the part of plant hard and stiff because cells are dead then they are they help to make the that part of plant hard and stiff it also provides mechanical strength okay to the plant so i hope now parenchyma colenchyma and the sclerenchyma are clear to you what is the similarity what is the difference between them on the basis of the structure also and on the basis of the function also so students now understand let's parenchyma colenchyma and sclerenchyma with the help of these diagrams that are given in the ncert book okay take a look at a first this is the transverse section of a parenchyma okay we will be studying two sections transverse and the longitudinal so first one is the transverse section of the parenchyma you can see it was saying the cells are oval you can see the oval shaped cells with the intercellular spaces okay they were also elongated that will be seen in the longitudinal section so i put is clear green color cell means they contain chlorophyll okay if the it is showing that green color then it contains chlorophyll and if contains chlorophyll then that parenchyma is known as chlorenchyma okay so intercellular spaces are present and the cells are oval okay now take a look at a second you can see the cells are elongated this section a second this is the longitudinal section of the parenchyma now take a look what are the components cytoplasm is there nucleus is there middle lamella what is middle lamella see middle lamella helps to stick the two cells together okay the two cells the two neighboring cells that stick together because of the middle lamella okay then there is chloroplast again as i said chloroplast containing parenchyma is known as chlorenchyma then there is a vacuole intercellular spaces as i told you are present and then cell wall because it is a plant cell so the cell wall will be present okay so is it clear parenchyma structure they are oval and elongated oval we discussed in the this one a first it is the oval they are in the transverse section in the lo longitudinal section it is elongated cells okay now let's move on to the b b first is the transverse section of colon chyma again you can see the cells are generally you can say <coughs> quite similar to the oval shape okay there is also a vacuole cell wall nucleus and then i told you that there are irregular thickenings at the corners means where the two cells are meeting or at the corners of each cell irregular thickenings and due to these irregular thickenings there is no or very less intercellular space there were intercellular spaces in the parenchyma but in the colenchyma it is absent or nearly very less okay very less because of the irregular thickenings getting it this is the colenchyma and transverse section of the colenchyma as you tell in as we to, we were told that cells of the colenchyma are living they are oval so this is oval and they were also elongated so elongated we will see in the longitudinal section and this is the longitude b second it is the longitudinal section of the colon chyma you can again see this time the cells are elongated uh, just quite similar having few differences with the a second a second is the parenchyma take a look end wall you can see there is the irregular thickenings red color 
then there is a primary cell wall in the bracket it is written thickened at the corners it is also having chloroplast nucleus vacuole cytoplasm also okay and it is given intercellular spaces but you can say it is absent okay very little very little intercellular spaces or absent okay you can say if there is very little intercellular spaces getting students so both contain a and b both contain nucleus you can see both have a having nucleus so that's why we said that they are the living cells we told you that parenchymas are also living and the colenchyma is also living getting it students very important diagrams are these now let's take a look at c that is sclerenchyma c fast first is the transverse section of the sclerenchyma take a look at that how were the sclerenchyma they the cells of the sclerenchyma were dead okay so cell wall is composed of lignin you can see it is thick the walls is thick made up of lignin which makes it hard also getting it and in the longitudinal section you can say that they are narrow and elongated you can see the elongated cell in the c second that is the longitudinal section of sclerenchyma you can see the longitudinal uh, elongated cells lignified thick walls inside the cell it is written narrow lumen narrow means very thin narrow lumen sometimes due to lignified thick walls the space is very less okay i told you due to this thick wall the space inside the cell becomes very less getting students and very important that these are dead cells parenchyma and colenchyma were the living cells okay students so students today in this video we discussed three types of simple tissue now that are parenchyma colenchyma sclerenchyma and before that we discussed meristematic tissue they were also of three types apical lateral and intercalary then we moved on to permanent they were of two types simple and complex and in the simple we discussed these three parenchyma colenchyma and the sclerenchyma okay one more <coughs> according to the flow chart that is the protective simple tissue is left uh, we will be doing in the, in the next video and with the complex tissue okay students but before <coughs> that you should complete this lecture go through it again learn the important terms that i have told you today learn them write them down write them down in the copy okay make your self notes that will be very important okay students and take care of yourselves keep studying thank you